Uh, so under safety and health officer, under OSHA Act, there is a regulation, they call it safety and health officer regula regulations. Eh? So date of comm commencement is uh, been uh, enforced on the 22nd August uh, 1997. So 1994, the Act only there. And then there is a regulation 1996, uh, Health and Safety Committee. And then come into this uh, regulation, they call it uh, Health and Safety, uh, Safety and Health Officer Regulation. Eh? So this regulation come into force on 22nd August 1997. Eh? Uh, <clears throat> so there is two regulation. Uh, one is the, they call it order. Uh, 1997 and also the other one they call it uh, regulation 1997 eh? 316 and 315 so this regulation uh, comprise of what are the the thing about safety health officer eh? so in terms of management safety uh, uh, some of uh, the, the industry have to appoint eh? safety and health uh, officer Eh? So they all have uh, under the Act, eh, safety health officer is there. Eh? Similar to OT in future, because we already have uh, an Act, eh, Allied Health Professional Act, and uh, probably one or two years time, we all have to register. Uh, we have also going to have a regulation. Uh, under uh, LR Health Professional, but this one uh, specific for health and safety officer. In future, probably you want to embark uh, or you want to further your career in health and safety, uh, you can also uh, turn your career into health and safety officer, uh, but you have to undergo uh, certification at NIOSH for about I think about uh, two months, three months, eh? then you can get a, a certificate, a safety and health officer certificate, and then you can uh, register as a as practitioner eh? for safety and health officer. So, in terms of this safety and health officer, there is an order and also, so in terms of order, there is a Description, eh, description of industry that required to employ safety and officer. So, so this is the in term of uh, uh, when they have a building of operation. For example, that they if there is a construction, eh, construction, they want to build a a, a building. Eh, the contract price exceed twenty million. Uh, they should employ a safety health officer. Uh, for example, you want to build a house, bungalow house. Your bungalow house uh, shouldn't be employed safety health officer because the contract price not exceed 20 million. Eh? If your bungalow house more than 20 million, so you should hire safety and health officer. Eh? So work engineering construction. Construction, for example, they build up a uh, bridge, they build up a uh, 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 structure, and then the price exceeds 20 million. Yes, you have to employ safety and health officer. And also, any ship building at peak of work employ more than 100 employees. Now, for example, there is a shipyard. Shipyard, they, they making up the ship or they do maintenance eh? uh, they have if there is an employer more than 100 million uh, 100 people um, uh, 100 employees so they have to employ and set the order eh? and gas processing or petrochemical industry which more than 100 employees uh, so they also have to employ a safety had uh, officer eh? and if there is chemical and allied industry which more than 100 employees 
Uh, so, and uh, if there is industry that involve chemical activity, if they employ more than 100 employees, they also have to hire uh, safety and health officer. If there is any boiler or uh, pressurized web, uh, pressure PV uh, manufacturing activity, they, they call it pressure, pressurized vessel. Pressurized vessel manufacturing activity with more than 100 employees, uh, they have to employ safety and health officer. Any boiler, boiler ni maksudnya apa? Dia guna uh, steam. Eh? Dia ada satu boiler ni macam uh, apa? Priok lah, priok panas tapi besar, eh? besar. Dia apa? Melibatkan pressurized, pressurized vessel ni. Pressurized vessel ni, dia bahaya. Eh? Kerja dia melibatkan pressure yang tekanan yang apa? Yang tinggi. Eh? Biasanya pressurized vessel ni ada kat TNB, eh? tenaga kat apa? Tenaga Nasional Berhad. Dia buat apa? Power supply tu dia guna boiler, eh? boiler yang pekerja dia seramai lebih daripada 100 orang. Dia kena hire safety and health officer. Any metal industry which more than 100 employees. Any metal industry melibatkan kerja-kerja tukang besi dan sebagainya. Ada 100, lebih 100 pekerja, dia kena hire safety and health officer. Any woodworking industry which more than 100 employees. Yang tukangan kayu, eh, balak, dia potong balak tu jadi kayu. Uh, jadi, uh, then dia ada pekerja lebih 100 orang uh, pun dia kena hire safety head officer. Any cement manufacturing. Uh, ada kilang yang manufacture cement kan? Dia buat cement, uh, cement untuk uh, untuk building, construction dan sebagainya. Uh, dia lebih pekerja 100 orang, nah, dia kena hire safety officer. Ada manufacturing activity other than 5 to F to I, more than 500 employees. Any manufacturing activity, for example, Sony ke Hitachi, dia buat manufacturing kan, dia buat apa TV, radio, LCD dan sebagainya, handphone dan sebagainya. Kalau dia ada pekerja lebih 500, more than 500 employees, they have to hire safety and health officer. This is when talk about order. Ah, ini apa ni? Dipanggil order ni, dipanggil uh, arahan. Eh? Arahan uh, 1997 berkenaan safety officer. Ah, this is the uh, class or description of industry that shall to employ safety and health officer. So when talk about regulation. Uh, regulation 1997, safety head officer. So what the regulation shall apply to? So this regulation uh, is special for for person who acts as a safety and head officer. So bila uh, order tu, dalam order tu, bila dia lantik safety head officer, so regulation 1997 ni terpakai eh, terpakai kepada safety head officer yang bekerja di tempat tersebut eh. an employer of the class industry who are required to employ a safety and head officer so this regulation 1997 is for the the employer majikan eh, majikan yang uh, apa diwajibkan eh, diwajibkan untuk employ safety head officer So application for registration as a safety and health officer. So no person to act as SHO unless registered with DG. So in this uh, apa, uh, registration, in this regulation, when people want to register, so they, where they have to register? Uh, eh? They have to register with DG. Uh, the, uh, DG apa? Director General, Ketua Pengarah. So Ketua Pengarah apa? Bukan Ketua Pengarah. Uh, Kementerian Kesihatan, bukan eh? Ketua Pengarah 
Jabatan Keselamatan dan Kesihatan Pekerjaan. Ketua Pengarah Keselamatan dan Kesihatan Pekerjaan, DOSH, Department of Occupation Safety and Health. So this person who are practicing SHO, I have to register with uh, DG eh, under this uh, regulation form. And how they going to register SHO? They have to fill in the form as per schedule one plus a processing fee of 100 ringgit. Uh, so there is a processing fee which is uh, 100 ringgit. You want to apply as safety or health officer, you gonna register. Ah, dia punya, dia ada form dia dalam schedule one. Nanti saya tunjukkan. Dan dia punya fee mesti hundred ringgit. Eh, application submitted together with document and information as specified in the form. Dalam form tu ada apa dokumen dia nak. Ah, eh, kena isikan lah. So, what are the qualifications for registration? Uh, and uh, diploma in OSH or equivalent approved by minister. So, if there is a diploma, you will belajar diploma of safety and health. Uh, eh, dekat UKM, dekat mana pun UKM tak ada. Eh. Dekat UITM ada. Eh, UITM ada diploma of safety and health. Or uh, any equivalent approved by minister. Boleh uh, qualified to register. Uh, completed a course of training in OSH and passed any examination or equivalent approved by minister and has minimum three years experience in OSH. Uh, kalau you ada degree OT, you pergi khusus training di di NIOSH, eh? ataupun ada private eh? private uh, uh, apa training OSH, Ministry eh? Health, and you pass. Uh, and then Uh, you ada pengalaman tiga tahun experience in occupation safety and health, uh, you boleh register sebagai safety health officer. Eh? Uh, ada graduate kita contoh macam ada seorang tu, uh, dia graduate uh, degree, kemudian dia pergi NIOS training, uh, apa ambil kurs khusus, dan dia lulus, uh, kemudian dia Uh, praktis dekat Petronas, eh? dia dapat kerja praktis dekat Petronas. Uh, kemudian dia uh, sekarang ni dia jadi uh, eksekutif uh, OSH. Eh? Uh, sebab kerja safety hal of ni eh? um, apa uh, dia punya peluang besar. Eh? Uh, and any SO course conducted by NIOSH is one of the approved course. Uh, dalam course dekat NIOSH ni ada. Uh, certification course. Eh? Then people yang well, katakan dia ada engineering, uh, degree engineering, mechanical engineering ke ataupun uh, yang lain-lain tapi dia dah pengalaman kerja 10 tahun. Uh, dia pun boleh apply ke tu pengarah. Uh, tu pengarah akan consider. Eh? Uh, holds other qualification or has received training as prescribed by minister. Uh, so ada ada apa qualification yang uh, endorse by by apa ni uh, menteri eh menteri okey So qualification for registration shall not entitled to be registered as uh, SHO if uh, you cannot register as SHO if you been convicted uh, of any offence under the Act or any regulation. So kalau you ada melakukan offence kan, you melanggar uh, akta uh, apa ni OSHA atau regulation yang lain, uh, you Uh, tidak akan dibenarkan untuk register. Eh? Uh, committed of any offence and sentenced to more than one year jail. Uh, if you've been committed uh, offence, any offence and sentenced to more than one year jail, setahun dalam jail, uh, you dapat tiba salah or fine more than RM2,000, uh, you tak boleh dibenarkan. 
uh, untuk register uh, sebagai safety officer. Uh, kadang-kadang uh, apa ni uh, contoh you melanggar apa ni uh, PKPB uh, di depan dia pergi di penjara setahun atau denda lebih 2000. Uh, sekarang ni 1000 kan. Uh, katakan dah naik uh, melebihi 2000. Uh, you tak boleh register eh. And then declare as a bankrupt. Uh, bankruptcy. Uh, ini penting eh. So you all kena uh, apa ingat bahawa kalau you jadi guarantor atau you pinjam bank eh you tak boleh bayar. Kemudian dia, dia apa dia declare bankrupt mufflis you pun tak boleh uh, register eh sebagai SSO. So uh, di in uh, regulation 7 under regulation uh, health safety officer uh, DG to issue certificate of registration uh, to applicant whose application has been approved so untuk mengarah akan bagi certificate registration eh? dia kad dia panggil kad hijau eh? uh, and then you have to apa uh, attend continuous education program uh, di sini ada point dia eh? so kalau you nak renew you renew uh, dalam masa setahun you kena ada apa ada continuous education program eh uh, you kena training eh at least once a year uh, dia ada point system kat sini continuous education program means a course seminar conference or other education program in osh or equivalent approved by the uh, DG, eh, Ketua Pengarah. Uh, you can attend at least once a year. Uh, hadirkan dalam apa, seminar, conference, sebagainya. So, DG also may refuse to register any application if applicant does not meet the requirement. Uh, ni kuasa Ketua Pengarah, dia boleh tolak. Boleh refuse. Eh. So, duration of registration valid for three years. Duration unless cancelled earlier. So three, three years uh, you register apa dia punya validity three years dia macam kita ambil lesen lah uh, kalau lesen kereta sampai tiga tahun boleh kan tapi boleh cancel kalau you tak ada tak attend uh, continuous apa uh, education program eh. so then you boleh renew uh, bila you dah kata nak cakap nak habis dalam tiga tahun uh, you kena apply untuk renew, renewal uh, tambah RM50 saja. Uh, Mula-mula RM100 kan. Uh, sekarang kena tambah RM50 every 3 years eh, bila nak tamat. Eh. So DG may refuse to renew registration any application if cease to become a SHO. Uh, DG may refuse nak renew jika dia tak ada, tak bertugas sebagai SHO lagi. Eh dia tak praktis. Uh, register SHO who has been appointed as a H safety officer. Uh, kalau dia register tapi dia tak appoint sebagai safety dia tak praktis. Uh, dia tak praktis. Uh, orang tak nak lantik dia sebagai safety officer, dia, dia punya registration can be uh, refused uh, sebab dia tak praktis. Eh. And then not met any requirements stipulated and fail to conduct his duties as stipulated. Nah, dia tak tak jalankan tanggungjawab. Eh, he not doing his role as a safety officer. Also can be refused to renew. Eh. And then not shown any evidence that he has attended any continuous training program or equivalent in the last three years. In the last three years, if there is no evidence shown that he has attended continuous training program, the DG can refuse to renew. So, uh, DG also may cancel registration any SHO at any time if cease to become a safety head officer. Uh, kadang company itu, dia tak lantik uh, orang yang register ni sebagai safety head officer. So, DG boleh cancel. Eh? And convicted of any offence under OSHA. Dia pun, dalam OSHA dia pun ada melakukan kesalahan. Eh? Dalam OSHA, 
uh, dia boleh di cancel kan. Eh? Not met any requirements stipulated. And not obtain registration by fraud. The by fraud is mean that dia tipu lah certification dia, pengalaman dia ditipu. Then DG dapat tahu, uh, DG boleh cancel. Eh? Okay. Uh, notification of uh, SHO. Employer shall not shall notify in writing to DG within one month of any. Uh, employer pun ada tanggungjawab uh, if they appointed a SHO. Uh, employer shall notify. Dia bagi, dia bagi tahu pada DG in writing dengan tulis kalau dia ada buat appointment of uh, SHO. If there is also termination of or resignation of SHO. Uh, eh? So, when they appoint or there is a termination, if they terminate SHO or there is a resignation, they have to write, apa, they have to inform DG by writing. Eh? So, what are the duties of employer? Uh, apa duties employer pada safety head officer ni? Employer shall provide the SHO educate facilities including training, Uh, equipment, appropriate information to enable SHO to conduct his duties. So, apa ni employer mesti bagi SHO kemudahan. Ha, kena bagi dia office, the computer ke, ha, safety book ke, kan. Uh, and then training equipment uh, untuk dia menjalankan tugas sebagai SHO. And then appropriate information. Information tentang hazard di tempat kerja, information tentang statistik, kan? Statistik kemalangan, uh, poisonous, all that lah. Eh? So this is very important when they become SHO, they need this information. Uh, dia punya plan ke, dia punya apa? Material, chemical yang digunakan di tempat tu, eh? So SHO have to have information. Uh, regarding activities at the workplace and the numbers of uh, employees uh, working in the company tu eh dia punya activities what are dia punya activities uh, they have to provide the SHO eh? and then employer shall permit the SHO at least once a year to attend continuous education program So they have to give permission safety officer to attend uh, CME ataupun CEP uh, at least once a year. Uh, they can support safety health officer. Eh? Employees shall direct one or more supervisor to assist the SHO in any investigation. So, employer mesti bagi uh, pembantu uh, untuk membantu SHO kalau ada melibatkan kemalangan safety health officer nak investigate ya yeah, dia kena bantu eh yeah, employer mesti uh, apa bagi arahan untuk membantu safety health officer duties of SHO so what is the duties of SHO so SHO uh, first SHO have to advise employer on the measures to be taken in the interest, in the interest of safety and health. Uh, they have to advise employer uh, eh? uh, on the measures to be taken in the interest of safety and health. Eh? So whatever measures, whatever control measures ke, program ke, of education, training ke, Eh? Atau PPP, PPE yang terkini ke, eh? uh, yang yang lebih baik, eh? the employer have, the SHO has to advise the employer. And then employer punya duties have to inspect place of work to determine any hazard liable to cause bodily injury. So, tugas safety officer have to inspect workplace tu. And then to determine any hazard. Uh, hazard, uh, you all know again hazard? Hazard, there is four M's. Uh, 
for ants, materials. Eh? Material it can be uh, chemical, yeah, hazardous, eh? machine, material, machine, machine yeah, hazardous that can cause or, uh, injury. Eh? And then uh, media, media, the environment at working place. Uh, for example, the air, humidity, temperature, uh, uh, that hazardous to human being. And the uh, last one, the man, again, man also, very important, worker. Uh, worker can be hazardous also. A worker young, uh, has uh, inappropriate behavior. The uh, personality, young, not what shortcut. Yang tak aware, tak pakai uh, PPE, yang tak dengar instruction, eh? uh, this become hazardous. Uh, eh? Contoh macam pekerja, the one to come to training. Eh? Uh, eh? This one can, is dangerous, is hazardous to the the working environment. So they have to determine. So safety alert officer have to determine uh, hazard that can cause bodily injury and advise the employer how to encounter that, how to take measure. Eh? And then SHO has to also to investigate any accident, any near miss, eh, dangerous occurrence, poisoning or disease. Uh, if there is a, for example, accident at the workplace, a safety officer have to investigate. Uh, you have to investigate and uh, give a report and recommendation eh, to the employer. To assist employer or safety health committee in organizing and implementing OSH program. Uh, the safety officer has to come up with the training program, training uh, manual handling, handling technique, uh, identify how to identify hazard, how to wear uh, PPE, uh, safe way to wear how to take care or maintain PPE. Uh, they have to train, uh, help the, the employer and also set the high committee uh, in organizing eh, and implementing OSH program. Doing drilling, uh, drilling eh, kalau emergency, macam uh, mana kalau ada kebakaran, uh, dia kena bantu employer untuk training pekerja-pekerja. Uh, Okay, and uh, another duties of SHO is to become secretary of safety health committee. And uh, previously, in the safety health committee regulation, there is if there is a safety health uh, officer being employed over there, automatically safety health officer become a secretary. Uh, this is very important. Is the dual duties to become the secretary of safety health. Committee, eh? and then to assist the safety committee in ins inspection. If there is monthly, dalam safety committee regulation, kan, they can inspect at least uh, once for three months. Eh, for inspection, so he have to assist safety health committee, and then to collect, analyze, and maintain statistic. Uh, collect, analyze, maintain statistic of people who injured. Poisonous, eh, dangerous occurrence, near miss. So this safety health officer have to maintain the statistic because the stati statistic uh, shows that whether the program or the implementation of safety is effective or not. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Then to assist any officer in carrying his duty under the act and regulation. So, if there is a regulation of uh, safety committee, regulation of noise, uh, regulation of uh, lead, the uh, gun. Uh, so, <clears throat> they have to carry out his duty. Eh? To carry out any other instruction made by the employer uh, or any matters uh, pertaining to safety and health. 
at workplace. So any instruction made by the employer, uh, matters pertaining to safety and health, so they have to carry out. And these are the duties of safety health officer. They have to submit report. Uh, report to employer by 10th of every month and shall contain. So safety health officer, the punya job, they have to submit report uh, to employer. So every 10th of months, eh, kata bulan August, puluhai bulan, September, puluhai bulan, so they kena submit report. Eh. Apa report tu? Uh, any action? to be taken by employer in order to comply with the act and regulation. So, uh, if there is action to be taken by employer, they, apa, whether the employer comply or not with the, uh, the act and regulation. Eh? Uh, so, depend on the regulation. Eh? For example, regulation lead, they have to do medical surveillance. Eh? They have to check blood sample of the workers every uh, three months once. Eh? So, so the safety officer have to make a report. Uh, ada tak employee ni buat apa yang sepatutnya eh? according to the act and regulation. Eh? Methods of establishing and maintaining a safe and healthy work condition. So, dalam report dia mesti ada macam mana nak na establish and maintaining a safe and healthy working condition uh, eh, for example like people working dalam bilik kan dalam uh, bangunan mesti temperature dia berapa lighting dia berapa eh uh, untuk yang kerja yang fine apa precision dia uh, dia punya lux lebih contoh 300 lux Uh, so dia kena bagi tahu pada employer and then when employer tu buat tak comply tak eh? the number and types of injury including the numbers of person injured this uh, person uh, for example dari accident dia kena mesti bagi report pada employer tu berapa banyak accident including the number of person injured Lost time injury, LTI ni lost time injury. Maksudnya, due to injury, dia cuti. Uh, disebabkan uh, kemalangan, kecederaan, uh, dia ambil cuti. Uh, and LTI, non lost time injury. Uh, eh? Non lost time injury, cuti bukan disebabkan oleh kemalangan dan sebagainya. Contoh, dia demam panas, eh? bukan disebabkan oleh di tempat kerja eh dia uh, also apa uh, setia officer also have to make a report on this eh any machinery plan etc or any description of manual labor liable to cause bodily injury uh, eh? so any plan or machine yang menyebabkan uh, kecederaan uh, apa pada anggota pada pekerja tersebut, dia kena report pada majikan. SHO has to submit report any machinery, plant, appliance or PPE required for minimize risk. So, kadang-kadang ada machinery mesin yang perlu dibuat guarding ya eh, guarding ni atau plan yang perlu dibuat maintenance ataupun PPE yang diperlukan untuk minimize risk kan kalau dia tak pakai PPE ni uh, tak apa dia kena submit report lah uh, katakan ada PPE memang required for minimize risk for example like COVID-19 ni kan, eh, dia kena ada mask pelitup muka, mask tu mesti ada three, three layer eh. so this thing have to make a report keperluan ni, sebab apa majikan mesti nak, kalau dia nak minimize ni, dia mesti uh, take action eh. 
recommend any alteration to be made in the interest of safety and health. Ha, kalau ada perubahan yang perlu dibuat, uh, perlu dicadangkan, uh, mesti dibuat. Eh. Any work related to safety and health carry out in order to promote safety and health. Eh. Uh, kalau ada, <coughs> for example, uh, for example, kerja construction, eh. Ada uh, first before buat construction dia kena buat uh, exercise uh, stretching exercise. Uh, this one to promote safety and health. Eh? Dia kena buat stretching. Kalau tidak uh, pekerja akan apa easily injured. Kan? Uh, so dia kena uh, buat report eh, pada majikan. Any outstanding matter arising from previous report. Kalau ada apa outstanding matter yang employer tak tak take into action ataupun tak ambil tindakan dia kena apa ni kena mentionkan lagi dalam report ni eh? any other matter related to safety and safety and health ha, kalau ada berkaitan dengan keselamatan dan kesihatan ha, dia kena report dia eh? okey so this is the rule of uh, there is two role uh, duties of employer to safety and health officer and duties of safety head officer eh? so when employer receive the report from the sho uh, they shall discard the report with sho within two weeks after receive so after the employee dapat report from the safety officer every 10th month 10th of the month, every month, so they have to discuss, eh? employee have to discuss uh, within two weeks. Shall countersign the report to confirm receipt. So, sebab safety health officer ni under, under the act, under the regulation eh. So, employee kena countersign. That mean, dia dah, dah been informed, dia dah tahu report yang dia bagikan oleh safety health officer. Eh? And this report to be kept for a period of 10 years. So, bila ada berlaku kemalangan, DOSH akan check report yang dibuat oleh SHO dan apa action yang telah dibuat oleh employer. Dia ibarat macam mata-mata kepada DOSH lah. Enforcement, enforcement government punya lah. And dia kena simpan report tu for a period of 10 years. So, if there is a death and sickness and absence of SHO, what uh, what DG will uh, what take action? Eh? So, DG by certificate in writing that allow work to be carried out for more than 3 months without SHO. Kalau ada SHO tu sakit, mam ke, dia absent, eh? uh, dia tak boleh kerja. So, DG uh, boleh buat, eh? boleh write, uh, apa? majikan boleh mohon uh, tanpa 3 bulan, eh? 3 months without SHO. In case of death, sickness of absent from work. Uh, kalau dia ada yang mati ke meninggal, sakit, eh? uh, yang teruk, uh, 3 bulan boleh. Ya, tapi kena buat, kena mohon pada DG lah untuk pengarah. Hmm? Baik, dah habis dah. Okey. Dah, dah tamat dah saya punya lecture. <laughs> so ada... Ada yang nak tanya soalan tentang uh, safety officer ni? Uh, uh, Safa nanti attend the form masuk dalam WhatsApp eh. Boleh Safa? Boleh dah, dah masukkan dah. Okay, thank you Safa. Okay, any question okay. regarding apa safety head officer ni? So if you all want to Embark a new career, apa, rather than become OT, you also can uh, apa ni, uh, pursue this uh, 
ini safety head officer punya job ni eh sebab uh, ramai eh graduate kita yang tak ada jadi POT uh, dia belajar dekat NIOSH and then ada yang kerja dekat Petronas dekat Shell dan sebagainya uh, nanti saya tunjukkan ada seorang tu dalam Facebook dia selalu keluar dalam Facebook eh apa nama lupa nama dia ya Rabbi uh, ada eh uh, okey ada soalan tentang uh, Topik ni? Anyone? Doktor. Hmm. Ya, yeah, siapa? Ah, Yasmin. Ah, Yasmin. Officer ni dia kerja untuk satu company je ke? Yes, dia tengok dalam apa regulation tu kan dia specified dia specified, specified kan apa what type of apa ni company ataupun numbers of workers yang perlu hire di hire oleh majikan eh okey this is for people yang want to work at that particular uh, industry ke kan uh, company ke uh, ada juga safety officer ni dia kerja sebagai consultant uh, consultant maksudnya dia ada company his own company and uh, ada company yang uh, dia nak apa minta advisory tentang hand safety dia bayar consultant fee dia ni boleh bekerja merata lah dia sebagai penasihat sebagai consultant boleh juga so for example you want to dia ni apa ada company nak nak minta nasihat daripada you tentang macam mana nak create policy manual procedure Uh, so you can come over there dengan bayaran tertentu uh, you sebagai consultant untuk that eh. so job as safety officer ni uh, luas, kerja dia luas eh. semua perlukan sebab you tengok kalau melibatkan 100 pekerja lebih uh, dia kena hire safety health officer dan melibatkan uh, projek lebih 20 juta eh. uh, dia kena hire safety health officer is a well apa ni very wide scope of area eh? uh, contoh macam bukan setakat kerja dekat Petronas je eh? kerja supermarket pun boleh ada safety officer di sekolah pun perlu ada safety officer eh? sebab kadang pekerja dia lebih 100 orang eh? uh, dia kena hire safety head officer okey okey good Yasmin ada siapa nak tanya lagi Maksudnya satu company tu uh, satu safety head officer je ke? Ya. Yeah. Uh, Minima satu lah. Uh, kalau dia nak kata company ni macam Petronas tu besar kan? Uh, dia banyak lah safety officer, dia banyak cawangan. Uh, banyak cawangan. Macam uh, Bershel. Uh, dia banyak apa pelantar. Macam TNB. Banyak power station dia eh dia banyak pressurized uh, boiler eh uh, so dia kena hire ramai lah safety officer dia okay, ada lagi soalan doktor saya nak tanya okey siapa ni suara tak dengar ha hafsah 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 yang tadi kan continuous education program kan hmm. dia kena datang kan ya yeah. uh, yang tu uh, semua memang education program daripada OSH je eh. Maksudnya employer tak ada anjurkan lah program apa-apa. Uh, yang di recognize oleh DOSH lah. Maksudnya sebelum dia buat proses tu, dia akan uh, mohon uh, merit lah, point. Point, continuous point apa punya merit. Uh, maksudnya DOSH recognize that program. Uh, DOSH akan buat Biasanya dos akan ada monthly, three months one uh, training, once a year conference tentang safety. Uh, bila dia recognize the other merit, then uh, it can be count uh, for uh, CME. Uh, yeah, okay, good. Ada yang nak tanya lagi?
Saya akan tunjukkan satu video uh, berkenaan dengan setiap officer ni. Eh. Okey, ini ada satu video uh, we share to you all. Uh, ya, yeah. I use Okta FX to trade from home to get additional income. With a competent approach to training and proper practice, you can start earning enough to ensure a high standard of living for yourself and your family. So hari ni aku nak share satu bidang which aku rasa mungkin ada orang tahu pasal bidang ni and tapi aku rasa banyak orang juga tak tahu pasal bidang ni satu bidang yang saya sedang ambil so saya nak share kepada korang semua kewujudan bidang ini dan share sedikit informasi-informasi terhadap bidang ini namanya adalah Occupational Safety and Health ataupun dalam PM kita panggil keselamatan dan kesihatan pekerjaan tugas dia adalah untuk mencari hazard ataupun benda-benda yang berpotensi untuk membawa aksiden ataupun insiden dan kita akan evaluate it tengok tak berteruk dia punya risk tu dan kita akan mengawal benda tu supaya dia tak menjadi kemudaratan kepada kemalangan. So dalam bidang ni profession-profession dia ataupun orang-orang dia biasanya dikenali sebagai safety site supervisor ataupun triple S, SHO ataupun safety and health officer ataupun safety engineer ataupun safety manager. So mana kita boleh jumpa bidang ni ataupun pekerjaan ni? For information, actually bidang ni boleh dijumpa di mana-mana saja. Kalau ikutkan Occupation Safety and Health Act 1994, kalau satu tempat kerja melebihi daripada lima pekerja, majikan tersebut patut atau perlu mengsetiakan satu safety and health policy which is satu polisi yang berkenaan dengan keselamatan dan kesihatan pekerja. Dia memang wajib tetapi saya rasa pada masa sekarang banyak juga company-company kecil yang tidak ambil peduli kepada perkara ini which is saya rasa agak serius lah sebab bila kita nak bekerja kita bekerja tetapi kita sebagai majikan kita tak menjaga keselamatan dalam kesihatan ataupun kebajikan for me dia tak berapa fair kepada pekerja kita kalau korang nak tengok mana ataupun biasa akan jumpa ke mana so biasanya akan jumpa dekat tempat construction kilang-kilang hospital hotel ataupun otomotif punya manufacturing industry memang ada profession ini untuk pengantang korang bukan sahaja safety and health officer ataupun SSS saja tapi bidang ni sangat luas dia tak macam contohnya macam pilot so apa yang you akan jadi adalah pilot saja tapi dalam bidang ni you bukan saja boleh jadi sebagai yang tadi saya sebut tetapi you boleh pergi kat cabang lain which is sebagai contoh hygiene technician CHRA which is chemical health assessor dan sebagainya so setiap tugas profession profession ini adalah berbeza dan sangat luas so bidang ni adalah satu bidang yang sedang berkembang dalam Malaysia kita baru-baru ini DOSH Department of Occupation Safety and Health juga telah melaksanakan impian 2020 so, So, banyak company mulai sekarang dia dah ambil perhatian kepada bidang ini dekat tempat kerja mereka. Kalau sesiapa yang ada interesting on this bidang, sekarang dah banyak juga institusi-institusi ataupun universiti-universiti yang juga offer this particular bidang untuk diploma ataupun degree. Ataupun kalau korang nak tahu lebih lanjutnya, boleh mengunjungi laman web NIOSH sebab sana ada lagi full detail yang berkenaan dengan bidang ni. So, bidang ni agak menarik. Actually, dia tak memerlukan kredit yang tinggi sangat sekiranya anda punya Science, Mathematics dan juga PM ada kredit so anda ada layak untuk sambung pelajaran dalam bidang ni. So bagi saya bidang ni akan menarik dan juga sangat mencabar sebabkan kita tak tahu apa yang akan berlaku di tempat kerja kita setiap hari. Jadi bidang ni sangat memerlukan orang yang baru untuk join bidang ni supaya kita boleh memastikan setiap orang datang kerja dengan selamat dan pulang dengan selamat. Okey, ada soalan tentang ni. Tentang setia officer regulation. Okey, kalau tak ada soalan, uh, 
Okay. Last time I apa ni, saya dah upload nanti saya akan uploadkan satu video tentang what is the different safety officer dan juga safety and health officer lain eh bukan kerja sebagai pengawal keselamatan tu lain eh keselamatan dan kesihatan pekerjaan lain dengan pengawal keselamatan eh nanti you tengoklah uh, YouTube tu so next kita discuss tentang uh, guideline of visual terminal uh, VDT ada siapa yang dah baca tentang guideline ni so this guideline is very important eh Uh, for people yang ada spondylitis, yang ada migraine, eye strain, kan? Uh, yang apa, bekerja dengan uh, uh, visual terminal, eh? So, whenever you visit dia punya workstation, so you need to advise, you need to recommend, uh, uh, apa ni? When you investigate dia punya workstation, what ah? So you able to detect what are the risks that uh, become hazardous to them, and then you need to recommend uh, in terms of visual terminal what is the the apa dia panggil uh, uh, yang boleh minimize risk. Eh? Dia punya eye strain, uh, apa neck pain, dan sebagainya. Eh? So anyone boleh cerita tentang uh, Uh, VDT ni Tak ada seorang pun Tak ada yang berani pun nak cakap eh? hmm, Semua nak kena jemput Malu se Malu apa malu Masa ni lah Nak tunjuk dengan kebolehan ni ah. Okay Kalian safety for working with video display uh, display unit, eh, video. Uh, kat sini siapa yang boleh? Siti Nadia, mana Siti Nadia? Okay, Siti Nadia boleh cerita tentang ceritakan tentang ni uh, video ini. Sofia? Mana Sofia? Halo Sofia. Ah, so you summarize je apa yang you dapat tentang ah uh, guideline ni. Jangan in detail lah, eh. Sofia, dia baca tidak? Hmm? Senyap je. Hello Sofia. Uh, siapa yang boleh? Wahidah? Hawasha? Saya saya ada dia. Ah. Dekat dalam Wahida. Wahida Wahida. Okey. Dekat dalam video guideline ni dia ada cerita macam a mula dia a pasal health effect kalau a health effect dia lepas tu ada yang requirement untuk a adapt dengan physiological and psychological need tu macam dia punya general duty hmm. and then ada pasal prevention ah uh, prevention dia untuk untuk worries dia <coughs> macam buat pasal buat test design buat hmm. um, equipment and system factor buat environment factor ah hmm. uh, macam buat test design ni ada pasal yang work desk atau work surface dia ah hmm. uh, pasal safety um ini pasal chair dia okay. um, macam dia boleh adjustable head and back rest semua tu mm -hmm. uh, lepas tu pasal uh, ada tadi saya baca pasal uh, pasal macam keyboard dia tu pun um, kena kita kena 
ambil um, macam penting lah. Dia hmm. should be still and separate from the screen untuk hmm. comfortable working position hmm. untuk avoid fatigue. Lepas tu pasal mouse pun sama. Pasal mouse yang kita guna and then dia punya working environment. Hmm. Ha, dia banyak doktor nak. <laughs> nak cakap semua ke? Tak apa. Tak ada cerita je apa yang you dapat lah. Ha, ha, yes. Habis ni ya. Ah, uh, Lepas tu macam pasal illumination macam working environment ni tu pasal room lighting kita kena kena appropriate lah dengan kerja yang kita buat tu hmm. um, Macam level lux dia tu hmm. and then ada pasal reflection and glare tu juga Yes, so, pasal ah uh, Pasal noise level pun ada Noise level dia punya uh, Apa ni, apa ni? video display unit tu kena kedudukan dia kan ha, kena ha, kedudukan dia tu kedudukan dia dalam keadaan ha, horizontal berapa degree daripada i i i apa i level tu kan mm -hmm. okay. so, tu lepas tu pasal um, kita kena refer kepada job demands kita macam word rate word rate dia lepas tu word load mm -hmm. and then macam word jap Dengar ke? Dengar, dengar. Okay, okay. Lepas tu macam work pause and rest period ni macam kita kena rest for 10 to 15 minutes in the morning. Hmm. Uh, maksudnya between works tu lah. Based on kita punya job demands. Um, then ada pasal uh, Lepas tu dia, dia bagi tahu tips untuk video user ni. Macam untuk kita getting comfortable, lepas tu waktu kita nak guna keyboard macam mana hmm. and nak guna mouse hmm. um, and also nak read the screen. Maksudnya dia bagi tahu guideline ataupun macam tips supaya kita nak kurangkan uh, minimize health and safety adverse impact kat situ. Alright, good. And then pasal posture pun ada. Uh, lepas tu last dia ada pasal checklist untuk uh, video user ni. Okay, good. Uh, macam tu lah yang saya baca. Okay, in term of lux kan? In term of lux, uh -huh. uh, dia ada tiga jenis working condition. Uh, dia ada tiga working condition tadi. Read task with task. well printed soft the fonts. Dia uh -huh. menggunakan kerja kerani kan? Uh, 300 lux. Uh, task with reduce readability of soft document. Ada uh, guna-guna boleh halus kan? Uh, 400 to 500 lux. Uh, task yang melibatkan data entry. Task uh, dia perlukan 500 to 700 lux. Yan tengok Yan ada motor ke? So depends on the job task tu. Uh, so for example you want to recommend your, the worker kan in term of illumination lux tu. Uh, depend on the task. Uh, so this is the guideline. So kalau OT ni, dia want to become a safety officer dekat apa ni, company melibat, yang melibatkan uh, administration company ke, uh, company yang melibatkan data entry. Eh? So you boleh bagi recommendation eh? based on the guideline. Eh? So the guideline based on the working condition, the task tu. Uh, ni contoh reflection and glare. So kedudukan kedudukan uh, video keyboard pun uh, mesti ada kedudukan yang betul kan. Uh, so you tengok kalau kalau you susun buat arrangement furniture dia punya video keyboard uh, kalau ada tingkap uh, tingkap dia tidak boleh di sebelah sini. Dia kena sebelah nampak tak ni? Saya tunjuk. Nampak kan? Window dia mesti dalam kedudukan di sini sebab dia nak avoid void apa ni glare eh? glare, reflection glare eh? So this is the example of uh, kalau ada Doktor ha? Ya? Yeah? Tunjuk apa ya? Apa dia? Saya nampak uh, laporan akreditasi Akreditasi Oh lain Macam dokumen Oh, uh -huh. oh sorry sorry sorry. Apa salah saya tukar ni pula sekejap eh. Oh lain pula. Oh dengar ni. 
Okey. Nampak ni? Ah betul dah. Ah okey. Sorry eh. Beritahu tau jangan senyap je. <laughs> okey okay, ni. Okey ni kedudukan. To avoid uh, reflection of glare. Katakan you pergi workstation. You sebagai consultant kan? Uh, you kerja sebagai consultant dekat company. Dia want to have your punya advisor how to make arrangement of people yang bekerja dengan video ni ni yang melibatkan komputer data entry so you tahulah kedudukan dia macam gini this is the position of video with respect to window this position of video with respect to overhead lighting eh kalau ada overhead lighting overhead lighting ni yang lighting dekat ceiling lah lighting dekat ceiling dia tak boleh duduk tengah-tengah bawah light source ni dia kena di antara Eh, ini the guideline for you. Eh, you ada sumber rujukan. Eh, temperature. For example, temperature. People work at VDU, visual display unit. They have a temperature between 23 to 27 degrees. They have a humidity 75%. So this this is your recommendation. Then when you come to the workplace you measure lah dia punya temperature. Ha, kalau temperature dia below 23 degree ha, so you da, da, apa da, dapat identify this the issue the problem. Ha, kadang pekerja tu dia tak boleh duduk lama dia senang dapat demam ke ha, eh, sebab temperature dia. Ha, dia punya humidity you boleh measure. Kan kita ada alat kan. Dalam ergonomi kita boleh measure humidity level eh then dia punya noise people yang work at video dia punya decibel between 40 to 60 decibel so you measure the noise uh, di tempat tersebut kan kalau tempat tersebut below apa dia punya noise uh, above 60 uh, so you should recommend for example ada printer tu yang produce Uh, noise more than uh, 60 decibel. So you advise this printer being isolate, uh, letak dalam bilik. Uh, sebab memang kalau yang kerja yang melibatkan video ni, kalau ada noise more than 60 decibel, they will apa uh, disturb the uh, disturb the punya concentration. Uh, eh. uh, dia punya contoh nature of organization of work. Ada punya work rates, uh, operator should work at steady pace, uh, constant as opposed to maximal pace in short, short burst. Uh. Workload dia, dia kena, kita kerja ni yang melibatkan video, mesti ada rest, uh, eh, mesti ada rest, uh, 10 to 15 minutes in the morning, and one in the afternoon shift and by lunch break or about 45 minutes at midday so kalau you sebagai consultant you boleh be tahu you should have a rest kalau dia rest apa yang patut dia buat kena mungkin dia kena buat stretching exercise eh stretching exercise nah you kena train dia orang macam mana nak buat and exercise stretching and dan sebagainya eh sustain Sistem posisi should not be maintained for more than 20 minutes and is recommended that keyboard operator change task after a maximum of 20 minutes for a period of at least 10 minutes. So, yang buat kerja data entry ni tak boleh kerja berterusan. Ada maximum 50 minutes and dia ada rest 10 minutes. So, ataupun dia buat alternative work. Alternative work. Dia tak boleh kerja menyebabkan data entry. That's why, kalau dia kerja over limit, Uh, boleh menyebabkan error. Bila menyebabkan error, kan bahaya. Uh, mungkin mendatangkan risiko. Especially orang yang kerja yang high risk work. For example, yang kerja dekat uh, lapangan terbang, dekat control tower. Eh? Yang control tower tu yang melibatkan data entry. Uh, kalau dia apa data entry dia more than one hour, uh, boleh menyebabkan risiko boleh menyebabkan error eh, of data entry eh. 
Uh, this talking about job variety and rotation. Eh? So this is the job rotation. Eh? Tentang video pun ada tentang job rotation. Eh? Uh, furniture, apa yang perlu ada untuk maintain video. Eh? Kita kena cuci video. So, you as a consultant or OT, you boleh design training. Uh, eh? Design training. For example, pekerja-pekerja yang melibatkan clerical data entry boleh apa, buat training 2 hours untuk mereka. Macam mana nak maintain video, macam mana nak susun workstation dia, macam mana nak buat recognize static, macam mana nak rehat, break, uh, bila dan sebagainya. Uh, eh? uh, this one talking about staff selection and pre-employment medical examination pun ada kat sini. Eh? Ini lebih daripada medical. Ha, ni, <coughs> kalau aku dudukkan video, you tengok rule of thumb. Ha, dia punya level of keyboard dia mesti parallel to elbow. Ha, eh, elbow, ha, 90 darjah kedudukan dia. Ha, ni cara yang betul kita susun. Apa Kita letak keyboard kita di mana. Ha, dia punya sebenarnya kedudukan antara mata dengan Uh, ni video ni jarak dia antara apa one arm length of the uh, apa worker ni eh dia kena ada uh, below apa ni, elbow rest uh, dia kena kedudukan apa dia punya apa ni uh, ni dia 90 degree dan sebagainya eh so this is the way we want to consult apa ni uh, the employer or the employee when talk about video eh, video uh, this is a checklist uh, checklist uh, you want to do proactive technique uh, you want to investigate for example like uh, they for example they want you to identify hazard how you identify hazard by using the checklist uh, eh the checklist Or by, or by using apa ni, observation, by doing inspection or you interview uh, the worker. Eh? Uh, this is the specific dimension eh? uh, for the for the chair, for the apa ni, uh, video, the punya uh, apa ni, jarak antara video dengan mata dan sebagainya. Eh? So, uh, simpan apa guideline video ni because apa when you in a clinical punya area you going to use this one. Eh? kalau you work at occupational uh, health safety department or you become consultant eh or advisor to the company Uh, this guideline can help you. Eh? So, any question regarding this uh, material? Ada soalan tentang video guideline? Tak ada. Hmm? Safa? Okay. Tak ada ke? Okay. Tak ada. Uh, yang lain semua okey. Yang lain semua tak nak tunjuk muka eh. Okey. Ha. Okey, saya nak tanya satu soalan. Siapa ni? Hafsa. Hafsa, okey Hafsa. Ah okay. uh, dekat uh, video kat line suka kan dekat under keyboard dia ada cakap uh, quality arrangement. Quality arrangement okey. Quality. Ah uh, Q, Q W E R Okay, QWERT dia punya position of the uh, keyboard kan? Ya, yeah, Afsar? Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah, yeah. ah, okay. Itu uh, position biasa ke? Uh, itu, itu position yang when we apa ni kalau buat typing, kita buat typing dia punya dia ada kita ada 10 jari kan 
10 jari kita, kedudukan jari kita yang sebelah kiri ah mesti kedudukan Q W E R T. Kita boleh capai sebelah kiri tu kedudukan dia. Ah kedudukan sebelah kanan, jari kanan mesti dalam kedudukan Y U I O P. So this is the optimal uh, position of finger tu kalau kita buat typing. Jangan kita tangan kanan kita duduk di finger kita di duduk Q W E R T. Eh, kita punya left hand should be at Q W E R T. Finger kita tu. So Q dekat finger finger yang uh, jari kita yang yang kelima tu sebelah kiri tu W yang keempat uh, E yang ketiga W. So this position yang kalau kita type, optimal type, mesti kedudukan jari kita di sini, sebelah kiri. Tangan kita duduk sebelah kiri dan apa, jari kita akan apa, menggunakan, akan type yang sebelah QWERT lah. Ini ialah, they call it optimum posture, optimum apa, efficiency of uh, typing. Kedudukan yang optimum lah. Janganlah kita, apa ni, kedudukan kita, lagi bila kita dalam kedudukan betul, kita punya speed of typing will be faster. Eh, laju. Apsah? Okey, Apsah? Okey, okay. thank you, sir. Okey, alright. Ada ada you lah itu. Okey, ada soalan lain? Okey, kalau tak ada soalan, uh, so kita akan apa? Ada satu topik lagi next week dan saya akan upload uh, apa ni? Gak lain uh, dan untuk you membaca, eh? uh, baca gak lain tu sebab it's very important. Eh? The the gak lain. Uh, this is for us when we want to consult uh, the workers. Uh, the next week kita ada guideline uh, hmm, apa dia? Kat lain apa tu? Saya dah uploadkan eh kat lain. Ya eh. Hmm, gitu. Hari minggu keempat, ah ni keempat, ya. Okey, gak lain yang saya dah uploadkan kat sini. Ah, panduan dan panduan bagi pencegahan tekanan dan keganasan di tempat kerja. Gak lain for the prevention of stress and violence at the workplace. Ah, eh. So you all baca di segala lain. Then we discuss uh, next week. Yeah. Alright. Alright semua. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, see you next week. Everyone. Uh, jangan lupa register tu online. Okay, doctor. Okay, stay home, stay safe. Enjoy your study. Okay, bye. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor.